Hi, fifth graders, it's Mrs. Lemoyne again, and today we're going to be doing Unit 6, Lesson 15, Problem Solving with Line pot, Plots. So in Lesson 14, we worked a lot with line plots. So now we're going to use that information to solve some problems. First, we'll start with a warm-up. Find the value of each expression mentally. So here we go. One-third times 18. Well, I remember that when I multiply fractions, I can put this over one and then just multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. So one times 18 is 18 and three times one is three. And then I remember that 18 and this fraction bar also means divided by, so 18 divided by three is six. Okay, ooh, two thirds times 18. Well. That's going to be double of what we did in the first problem, isn't it? So I think that's going to be 12. Oops, sorry, 12, right? Because double of 6 is 12, and this is 2 thirds is double 1 third. And now it looks like they've doubled it again, right? So I can either, either double the product of 12, so double 12, and that would give me 24, or I could say 6 times 4, so that's 1 third, and now we're doing 4 thirds. 6 times 4 is 24 as well. Okay, now we have 5 8 thirds times 18. Again, that's just one more third, isn't it? I could do 5 times 6, because this is the 1, 1 third, and we're doing 5 thirds, so I could do 5 times 6, and the answer would be 30. Yeah? That would make sense to me. So five, I found five times the value of the first product because this is one third and I'm trying to get five thirds. Do you notice any patterns in the products? Do you notice any patterns? Well, there is an 18 in one factor for all of them and it's always some number of thirds. Once I knew the value of one third times 18, I can find the rest by multiplying the number of thirds times the product of one-third times 18. All right, so we're going to do an info gap in your classrooms, okay? So I'm going to model that in class, I mean on, on the video, but in your classroom it's going to work a little bit differently. In the classroom, if you're getting a problem card, you're going to silently read the card, you're going to ask a question, and you have to be very specific. Can you tell me, and be very specific, and then the data card student is going to also silent read his or her card and ask, why do you need to know whatever you had asked? And then you're going to respond, I need to know because. And then the data card student is going to listen to that partner's re reason and then answer if they have that information on the data card. If they don't have the information on the data card, just, just say, I don't have that information. And then when you have enough information to solve the problem, Display your problem card and solve the problem by yourself independently. Continue to ask questions if more information is needed. Share the data card and compare strategies and solutions. So I'm going to work through it, but I'm going to work through it seeing both cards. Okay? This is where your teacher will give you a new set after you've finished one set. So here's the problem card. I'm going to go ahead and read it. Han has two apricot weights to add to complete his line plot. So apparently his line plot is of apricots, the weights of apricots. The first weight is two and five eighth ounce and the second is one and one eighth ounce. What is the difference between Han's weight and the heaviest apricot or apricot and the most common apricot weight? The difference between Han's heaviest apricot and Han's most common apricot weight. So the first thing I'm gonna have to ask is what is the heaviest apricot that Han has? And so the person who has a data card would say, why do you need to know that? And I would say, because I need to know the difference between that heaviest apricot and the most common apricot that Han has. So then the data card person would say, so it looks like these are all the weights of apricots, and this one would be the heaviest, right? The one all the way to the right. 
and this one would be the most frequent or the, the most common ap apricot. It has the most in it. So here we go, apricot weights. So this is going to be two, right? Because I'm past two. And let's see if these are eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. So that's going to be one, two, three eighths. So three eighths. So the heaviest weight of the apricot is two and three eighths. Now I'm going to have to subtract that from the weight that is the most common. So that looks like it's going to be one. And if these are eighths again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then it's going to be two eighths. So I'm going to subtract two and three eighths from one and two eighths. And I love that they're in common denominators. I don't even need to make a common denominator. So the answer would be three minus two is one eighth. Two minus one is one. So I think I've answered that. And now I'm going to go check with my teacher and see if that's the correct answer. Okay, so when I checked with my teacher, that is not the right answer. So apparently these weights over here, the ones on my card, on the problem card, are not on the apricot weight scale, right? Because 2 and 5 eighths is not on here. So the heaviest weight is not 2 and 3 eighths. The heaviest weight is going to be 2 and 5 eighths. So I need to add that to here. So 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths. So there's my x. And then I had 1 and 1 eighth. 1 and 1 eighth. So we can add an x there. I still have the most common as 1 and 2 eighths, right? So I can still subtract 1 and 2 eighths. But now my highest one is 2 and 5 eighths. 2 and 5 eighths. So that was kind of tricky of them, wasn't it? 2 minus 1 is 1. So the answer is 1 and 3 eighths, not 1 and 1 eighths, because I did not account for the weights that I had to still complete. He has two apricot weights to add to complete to his line plot, and I missed that. So I'm glad I checked with my teacher. So now that I have checked with my teacher um, and I got it correct, I can go on to the second problem. So let's move on to the second problem. Hopefully I read more carefully this time. All right, so if I have the problem card, here is my card. Here are some of the weights of my apricots. There are 15 apricot measurements in total. Find the missing weights to complete the line plot. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I think the first question that I would ask is, uh, what are the missing weights? I have 12 weights, and I it says I need... 15, let me make sure I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I need 15, so I need three more weights. So I'm going to ask my partner, what are the three missing weights? All right, and my partner has this card, and it says the lightest apricot weight is 3 fourths ounce. So let's go ahead and plot that on our card. So 3 fourths would be... These are in eighths, right? Just like the last problem. So to make this eighths, I would have to multiply this by two over two to make it six eighths, right? So three fourths is the same as six eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to put an X there. The heaviest is two and three eighths. So here's my two. One eighth, two eighth, three eighths. There we go. And the most common apricot weight is one and a half ounces. So one and a half, to make that an eighth, I would multiply that by four over four, and I would get one and four eighths. So let's go to four. After one and one fourth, I mean one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. So it needs another X there. So there are my three missing ones. And that is that all we had to do? Yeah. There are 15 apricot measurements in total. Find the missing weights to complete the line plot. So there I did. That one was pretty easy. I hope that I got it right. So let me check with my teacher here. Yep. Great job. All right. Let's see what they ask us in this synthesis. 
What kinds of questions were most useful to ask? Well, in, in the first task, I asked for the heaviest apricot and then realized it was one, the, one of the ones on my card. And then I asked for the most common weight um, so I could solve the problem. So I had to ask for those weights. I, unfortunately, I didn't realize that I needed that heaviest weight on there until later. For the second problem, I needed to find out the rest of the apricot weights, what they were. So I tried asking for that. Um, I told my partner that she had some information about the heaviest, the most common. And then once I found that out, I was able to solve the problem. So you can share with your group and your teacher how you solved the problem. You saw how I did it. And now we're going to the next activity. This activity is called Mathematical Questions. All right. This line plot shows the weights of some apricots that my picked. All right. And there are my apricot weights or my apricot weights. What fraction of the apricots weigh less than one and a half ounces? Explain or show your reasoning. So again, this graph is in eighths. And I know that I could make this eighths by multiplying it by four over four. So I'm really looking for one and four eighths. That's the same as one and a half because four is half of eight. So one, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. Okay. So there are how many? Two that weigh one and a half, but I need the ones that weigh less than one and a half. So I think... I think it's going to be three, right? Three of these are less than one and a half. One, two, three. So three. And then how many of them are all together? Because they want a fraction. So it's three out of how many? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There are fifteen weights all together. And three of them are less than one and a half. So we want count one and a half, right? We want less than one and a half. All right, so I think our answer would be three fifteenths. Now we're going to write a multiplication equation that represents the total weight of apricots that each weigh one and five eighth ounces. So now I'm going to have to find one and five eighths. So one and one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. So here's one and five eighths. So how many apricots weigh one and five eighths? How many of them are there? There's one, two, three, four, five. So that means I can multiply this by five. So do I have to solve it? Um, yes, let's go ahead and solve that. So remember when we multiply a fraction, I'm sorry, a whole number times a fraction, I'm going to make this improper. So that means I'm going to multiply and then add, and I'm going to go up like this clockwise. So 8 times 1 is 8 plus 5 is 13, and I keep the denominator. Now I can multiply times 5. Now another way I could do that, right, another way I could do that is use our um, uh distributive property, right? So I could distribute this 5 to everything in the 1 and 5 eighths. So let's rewrite it up here. So 1, whoops, why it won't pick up my pencil better. 1 and 5 eighths is the same as 1 plus 5 eighths, right? Times 5. Or we could write it the other way around. We'll do that. That might make it easier for you to understand. So I'm going to say 5 times 1 plus 5 times 5 eighths. So there are two ways that we could solve that problem, right? So you choose which one you would like. This would be 5 plus 25 eighths. And then I would have to make this a mixed number to be able to add it to the 5. So let's go ahead and do it this way as well. So 13 times 8, I'm sorry, not 8, 5, times 5, 13 times 5, and that's going to be over 8, isn't it? Okay, so 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So 
but 65 eighths. And then I can easily make that into a mixed number by saying how many eighths are in 65? Well, I know that eight times what? Eight times six, eight times eight, eight times eight is 64. And I have one left over. So that means I have eight holes and one eighth left over. So let's do this one and see if it ends up being the same thing. So remember, we have 5 plus 25 over 8. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to see how many 8s are in 25. I know that 3 times 8 is 24, and I'm left with 1 eighth. So now I'm adding 5 plus 3 and 1 eighth, which is 8 and 1 eighth. So I just showed you two methods to do the same problem, right? We still got 8 and 1 8 ounce for both of them, um, but we did it two different ways. And you can choose the way that you like. Do all of my apricots together weigh more or less than a pound? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, I can see that that's really easily found out because I have several. Oh, these are ounces. Okay, so how many ounces are in a pound? We have to figure that out, don't we? There are 16 ounces in one pound. So what they're really asking is, do all of these weights add up to more than 16? More than 16. So we could just make some estimates there, couldn't we? If five apricots each weigh one and five eighths ounces, right? So one and five eighths ounces, these, and that equaled eight and one eighth ounce. Then we could add, um, that's more than half of a pound. So just this is half, more than half a pound, right? So 8 is half of 16. Um, there are five more apricots, and each one are heavier. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's five more that are heavier than 1 and 1 eighth, 1 and 5 eighths. So I'm going to say that this is going to add up to be more than half of a pound. So I'm going to say yes, yes, more than a pound or more than 16 ounces. All right. That was a lot of work there, but we didn't even have to work this one out. We just kind of reasoned it out, right? So if just these weigh half a pound and we have five more apricots that weigh more than half a pound, right? Then we know that it's going to be more. All right. Let's move on. What equation did you write for the total weight of apricots, each weighing 1 and 5 eighth ounce? Well, that was 5 times 1 and 5 eighths, right? So I guess we could write that again. 5 times 1 and 5 eighths. There we go. Can you use this information to help you decide whether or not the apricot... Well, we did, didn't we? We reasoned that out. There are 10 more apricots except for one. They all weigh more than an ounce. So that would be more than 16 ounces for sure. And we talked about how that would work. All right, let's see what else we have. We have added, subtracted, and multiplied fractions to solve problems about line plots. In what ways did we use the, these operations to help us solve problems? Line plots have a lot of different data, and the data had fractions, so when we answered the questions about the data, we had to add, subtract, or multiply. Which was your favorite problem about line plots? I guess mine was the egg because it had that picture. I don't know. In this section, let's see. Let's go back one. Sorry about that. I clicked too many. In this section, you added and subtracted fractions and worked with data on line plots. What did you get better at during this section? Well, I got better at reading line plots for sure. Um, and I can add fractions that don't have the same denominator, so that made it easy as well. All right, that's it for Lesson 15. I'll see you next time for Lesson 16. Remember to like and subscribe if you would so that I can continue to make these uh, videos for you guys.